Greetings from Union Station in downtown Denver, Colorado. Today is Monday, December 2nd, 2024. It is 2.01 p.m. Mountain Time, and right now the highest temperature will be today, 55 degrees, so quite warm. But today we're gonna try to do a little stroll through downtown Denver see a mix of some of the holiday decorations the Christmas market and then later today I'm going the rule the whole reason I came to Denver is I flew in to see the Monday night football game between the Cleveland Browns and Denver Broncos so hoping the Browns will be picking up a victory but we'll see Browns are three and eight at the time of this video so this is Union Station where the you can catch the train from the Denver airport straight here and there's other ones that funnel through here as well. When it gets darker out, they do a very nice Christmas light projection with a bunch of different designs that go on the face of this building. So that's always cool to see. Uh, you can see the Christmas tree over there. I'll see if I mesh any evening videos with this daytime video later because after the Broncos game is over my main plan is just to head back to the airport because my flight leaves in the morning so I'd be coming back here but if I happen to catch any decorations along the way or nighttime views I'll show that off let me cross the street here I figured I could make this like a walking video first going down 17th Street and that should hit the ice skating rink and eventually I can get to the Christ Kingle, Kindel Market. I am probably butchering the name. It's a German Christmas market that's near the Civic Center Plaza. nice murals and artwork on the building. I always love checking out what artwork there is to see. I probably want to take a quick peek down at 16th Street because in downtown Denver, oh, you have a holiday window here too, at the Oxford Hotel, I think. One street over, the 16th Street Mall in the past has been very nice, but uh, they started a construction project a couple of years ago. And I think some of it might be complete, but from what I read online, not all of it is complete. So what I was thinking of doing is walking I can take 17th Street down to where the Christmas or winter ice skating rink is. And that'll sort of guide me towards 16th Street, even though it's a little bit down as opposed to seeing the full 16th Street from Union Station. So even though we're warm right now, by the way, a lot of these Denver streets are one way. So like this Blake Street is one way going. Well, I'm not sure which way is west and east or north and south, but one way going that way. And then the next block might be one way going the other way. And I was gonna say, it's one of those things where you have to dress appropriately. I brought my nice if I flip the camera around, brought this jacket, which usually keeps me warm in anything that's around the 40 to 50 degree range. Like I could just wear this and I'd be fine. But then I also brought another layer uh, that I'll wear underneath this later because it'll be like 30 degrees during the game. So 
so now we're coming up to Market Street. And I need to look on Google Maps to remind myself where where the ice skating rink is. And by the way, this is another one-way street like I was mentioning earlier. This one also has a dedicated bike lane for at least a portion of it. Looks like we're about a one, two, three, three to four blocks away from it. So I'm going to be making a turn down. Arapaho Street. Oh, I do see some traffic going down 16th. Maybe I should like cut over to 16th shortly here to get more of a vibe on how it's looking. I did a popular winter walk where the snow was falling a few years ago. And a good portion of that was down 16th. And it looked pretty because you could walk almost like in the center of the street and capture a lot of the snow falling. Trying to see if I missed a button to press a... This is Larimer Street, which I know further down the other direction. Yeah, the, the light just didn't simply change. Oh, okay, it's, <laughs> it's a twist. The light, the crosswalk changed after I, uh, after the red light came on for traffic. Next street is Lawrence. Usually I like to pan the camera to the left and right. But the problem is I pan it to the left and you've got like a starburst shining off, reflecting off of a building. And most of the time if I pan it to the right, there's a uh, the sun in the eyes. Although not the case here because of the building. The sun is literally right behind that building. So this is a good street to actually walk down so that I'm not blinding the camera footage. This is the Tabor Center to our right. You can see there's an inner link that goes across to the other side. Reminds me of what the, in Cleveland, how they're constructing the Sherwin-Williams building. They're supposed to be building an inner link over the street to connect the two buildings together. Although I'm sure this interlink that we're seeing right here is much taller and thicker by the looks of it. See a PNC bank diagonal from us on the left. So they have a presence in the state of Colorado. Oh boy, is this... <laughs> I came at the... the right spot for this. And actually, so I'm surprised. 16th Street Mall is much more... 
renovated and finished than I thought. All right, so what it looks like is about two blocks down. That's probably where they haven't completed it yet. But let me pop over here for a second. Yeah, the reason 16th Street is cool is because it's very walker friendly. Buses can go down it and some traffic, but a lot of restaurants. You can see how they have the outdoor dining possible. Look for the bee colony around the playground. So I'm actually going the opposite direction, but I just wanted to get a quick glance at 16th Street. There's the Cheesecake Factory over there. And then the clock tower up ahead. I think the ice skating rink's not too far from the clock tower. But the, anyway, the reason I was laughing as I was coming up to this uh, block here is I've told this story a couple of times on several videos, but I'll tell it again because now you get a daytime visual of it. A few years ago, I was on a layover. I had filmed a video in downtown Denver. I finished and I came to this area here because I wanted to look at Google Maps to see if there was any restaurant late at night maybe I could get a quick bite at before I headed back to the airport so I was standing probably like right here there was not too many other people around but there was a group of like four teenagers over there perfectly fine mind you know chatting among each other then I saw some guy walking over here and he started approaching and I think he was approaching this way at first, so I walked a little bit this way. And when I saw that, then he walked you know, on the opposite side that way. So then I walked back this way because I'm thinking like, okay, it's late at night. You know, you just generally try to not have <laughs> strangers walk, making like a straight line path to you, especially when you're, you know, by yourself. But anyway, I ended up staying here. He walks up to that group of like four people. By the way, there's the free mall ride, a bus you can take down 16th Street for free sort of like a trolley but anyway he walks up to the group of people there stares at them they look up at him quietly like wondering what are you doing and all of a sudden he takes like a like a metal pipe or rod and swings it at one of the guy's head and the guy you know fortunately was able to duck back but that scared the crap out of me i just like took off instinctively and i ran that way and as I'm running that way, I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, like, I don't even know where I'm going. Like, hopefully this isn't a dead end. Fortunately, you know, because if you look at it like this, it might look like a dead end. Fortunately, if you go down there, it does go to the right and over to the next street over. And there were people out on that block. So I just like was freaking out when that happened. Yeah, that's a story I always think of in this spot on Denver. Now there was uh, still a lot of construction going on at that time and again it was nighttime and throughout Den downtown Denver and a lot of other downtown cities you do see homeless or vagrants wandering around. But overall I, you know I like what I'm seeing here. It's sort of vibed like how it used to be although my recollection is 16th Street Mall used to have a lot of this stuff in the middle of the street and then you would have a lane on each side so you had sort of walkway here walkway in the middle walkway on the left and a lot in between let's go ahead and walk over to the left again because once the light changes this is where the ice skating rink will be on this side of the street And at nighttime, all these trees would presumably be illuminated. You can see those ones over there are actually still on some of the lights. These ones aren't, which is kind of weird why half the street is on. But 
this clock tower, if I recall correctly, also has sort of a projection on it, at least in one of the directions at nighttime. I can hear the music of the downtown Denver ice skating rink. Again, now it's daytime. They open this at 11 a.m., so there might be no one riding this right now. Yeah, you can see if you want to go, the entrance is over here. Let's see. I'm not going to actually go, but yeah, that's where there are a few people riding. Not sure if we'll get a better view. I'm gonna think I'm gonna put my camera over the wall here. Yeah, right now you've got two two lone people going. So this will be something where, obviously, during the nighttime you're gonna see more more skaters. It's uh when it's two o'clock and it's still people working, not a weekend people you know children are going to be in school don't get the wrong impression like man it's a dead ice skating rink might be a different city if you're or a different case if you're in new york city but not here and then over there there's a big christmas tree with some nice colorful presents problem is i think some of this stuff closes at a certain time so like the denver broncos football game I'm estimating I might get out of the area like around 10 p.m. This this rink might be closing around that time, although it could be open at midnight. I got to check that. But the Christmas market will be closed well before that. There's a nice electric Christmas tree that I've seen one previous year that used to be on 16th Street. That will also be like finished by I think it's 10 o'clock p.m. So a lot of these decorations if I wanted to explore from like 10 to midnight they might simply just not be turned on. Let's cross the street quickly here over to Independence Plaza. see a Denver Broncos fan right here getting ready for the Monday night football game tonight so far my outfit is sort of incognito I mean I'm not trying to hide that I'm a Browns fan but <laughs> it's like there, there's the Browns logo right there so right now you can see the. This is where the, some of the construction resumes. So the 16th Street Free Mall ride actually makes a turn there. Across the way there you can see there's a Sockum Emporium. I assume that's like a sock shop. One of the things too, I brought a clear bag so I could pack very light because I again this is, I'm not doing a hotel, I'm just doing like a quick one day trip here. So the clear they only allow clear bags in the stadium, so I was like, well, that's the bag I'm gonna bring, but I can't bring like a boatload of merchandise if I see like a souvenir that I want to get. It may, be, it may be something small, but nothing excessive. All 
right, so it looks like this is where 16th Street Mall is sort of closed, but you can walk around it. So you just go over to the orange construction things. They're still cementing. Walk around this little detour and then we should be able to get back onto the main road. Here's Brooklyn, Brooklyn's finest pizza. I actually stopped in here on that snow day the one time and I do need lunch, so maybe I'll grab a quick bite to eat in here. Well, they were out of the Detroit pizza that I got a couple years ago, but they had a Sicilian and a pepperoni that I'm gonna try for lunch. Alright, just finished eating at Brooklyn's Finest Pizza. Next door to it, it's Colorful Colorado. Looks like a souvenir shop. That's one thing, downtown Cleveland doesn't quite have uh, dedicated souvenir shops. I mean, yes, there are souvenir shops, but what I mean is that those type of souvenir shops that I would see like in San Diego, Las Vegas, uh, Seattle, where it's just like bunch of these small knickknacks knick, knick, knick -knacks where you'll see a bunch of magnets that say Cleveland, a bunch of postcards that say Cleveland, a bunch of other little merchandise that says Cleveland, and all these other touristy type things. So continuing our walk down 16th Street. Again, you can see how that sun is just blinding right now. I wonder if there's actually a TJ Maxx over there. There's a sign that says TJ Maxx near the Denver Dry Building. There's a look at some of the construction that's going on. You got another souvenir shop here. And then the Wild West, you got another one. So that's three of them in a relatively short span. Mount Everest Imports. Yeah, they're just redoing the groundwork for the street. Here's Giordano's world famous deep dish pizza. Looks like the path is taking us to the actual street. So maybe they've done construction on the street portion here, but not the sidewalks. So if I keep going straight to my knowledge, we're just gonna run eventually into the market. That's why we're gonna keep on doing that. That has to suck though for all these businesses because it's, it's probably been like, I'll guesstimate a three, at least a three-year project and 16th Street is supposed to be this way it looks shorter 16th Street is supposed to be the you know Main Street that they advertise similar to if you're in Cleveland you might say Euclid Avenue so 
Oh, that sun is reflecting off that building up ahead. I should have stayed on the left side of the street. Maybe if I go right up against the wall here. Yeah, there's no way, no way to really escape it. So instead I'll point the camera to the right. You've got It's Sugar. Oh, this is actually the shopping mall. So it's a perfect time to point to the right side. It's a downtown outdoor walking space, but with some shops. There's going to be an H&M store right here. But yeah, I was saying it sucks for all the businesses and restaurants here because while this stuff's under construction, I'm sure they're not getting nearly as much business as they would hope to. That's part continued part of the mall. Uh, I'm going to cross over just because hoping to avoid that sunlight. But I will say, I'm, I was worried that I was going to walk down 16th Street and see a bunch of vacancies. But so far, a lot of the businesses still seem operational. Up ahead, you can see the Colorado Capitol building. <laughs> Got some Browns fans there. Look like more of a person who lived here was going up to a group of Browns fans saying, Hey, I root for you guys. This is Republic Plaza that we're at now, and don't think we can walk down that side. I mean, there may be a way to go by Potbelly. But let's try detouring and seeing if this side of the street is open for us to go through. The reason we saw the sun blinding us on this side earlier is because it was reflecting off that building from back there. I paused the video for a second because the construction crew was in front of me. Not intentionally because they were hauling a load, but they were going as slow as possible. Okay, so now we can't get through on this side. I'm going to go ahead and just go down one block. Or maybe... No, you can't. Sidewalk closed. We can detour a little bit because... Going over one block is going to still take us to the same spot. And that's pretty much most of 16th Street. We're just walking through what looks to be the Sheridan Hotel. And up here is 15th Street, and we're gonna make a left turn there. Can't tell if they're playing or not. Down, down the way, it looks like there's a fight about the brew. Two people almost like squaring up, so I will use my judgment and cross over here. <laughs> This 
is not going to be a scenic route for the past two or three blocks that I've been showing. But we're not too far away. It should only be like less than five minutes before we get to the market area. Here is Cleveland Place. Got to snag a picture of that. So I believe the market is inside this area over here. Colorado State Capitol building over there. This is almost like a Coliseum looking <laughs> structure here that we're walking through. Not sure which direction has the entrance. So we're gonna do a quick walk around. This side looks gated off, but I don't know if they actually want you to come through that way. So let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's, a, it's got an arrow pointing to the entrance being over there. We probably could cut through there. Maybe I'll do that in a second. This building has some nice Christmas decorations. Wreaths around the pillars, snowmen, garland. Looks like there's a public restroom over here on the right side. So the entrance is still pointing down to the right. So I guess we gotta walk around the fence more. Right here, they actually do have it on during the, during the daytime. That's the Christmas, big electric Christmas tree. It's still lit up. I'm not sure if the actual, yeah, probably the music's not going on. But you could probably catch it otherwise uh, once it gets a little dimmer entrance this way so now the market is that way across the way you've got the I think it's the Civic Center building correct me if I'm wrong they've got some nativity scenes a wreath and then Again, I may not be here at nighttime when they have it, but it's the building is lit up in like red, green, blue, purple, a bunch of different colors that go up the edges of the building. They make it very nice.
the Denver Christkind Market. Alright, so I walk through the entrance. This is a site map for the Christ Kindle Market. Mile High Tree was here, so we entered here. So they just have a list of vendors. Looks like there's 40 of them. So you can walk around this way and probably end up catching them all. So Bob's Roasted Nuts. Remember, everything here has a German theme to it, so you've got the magnets on the side. T-shirts in the back. Some jigsaw puzzles. The New Yorker. Again, you have to consider the time of day that we're here. This is one of those things where I'm sure in the evening it'll be a bit more crowded or weekends. Travel posters. Corey's chocolate, you got straw strawberries and other chocolates. You can get some hot coffee. Unique or unique ornaments. <laughs> Here's some fun hats and earmuffs. One for fifteen or two for twenty five for the earmuffs. A faux fur hat. So I didn't catch the ones that were on this side, so let me make sure I'm passing through.
some yummy looking pastries six dollars each or four for twenty cookies are also back there Get to taste some hot sauce, I think. There's a clothing shop. Winterborn Alpaca was the name of it, specifically. It's probably the <laughs> fun little stuffed animals you see. Dragonfly Botanicals. Some more interesting chocolate shape. <laughs> <laughs> is that stuff like actual chocolate or what? Yes. So like edible? <laughs> yes, a lot of decorative chocolate uh -huh. doesn't taste good because it like just barely tries to fit a bar to make chocolate. Yeah. I can confidently say that this is both delicious and decorative. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen them. <laughs> they look really cool. Maybe the type of thing like I'd love to buy, but I'm. I'm flying back and cool. I don't feel like I would be able to like preserve it. <laughs> oh, well, the best buy date on all of them uh, was August of 2026. Uh huh. So Interesting. They're pretty, they're pretty <laughs> simple, but they all survived being flown to Germany. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Well, if they survive that, then <laughs> my excuse goes out the window. <laughs> Not to try to put you on the spot. <laughs> right. We've also got. Mm -hmm. Grab bags of bits that broke in transit. Uh -huh. If you don't want to worry about <laughs> accidentally breaking them. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah, I'll keep walking around and think about. No worries. Do they are they like milk chocolate or is there a certain type of chocolate or? Uh, most things are going to be dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. Some uh -huh. milk. Uh -huh. And then whatever is visibly light chocolate. All right. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe a lot of people have seen stuff like that before, but I've never seen that. <laughs> that was really cool. There's bandanas, bow ties, collars, and leashes. Some more old German Christmas ornaments. Lots of ornaments in that one, including the guys that are doing a little bounciness, slinkies almost, cheese, fromage. All right, so we still have to make sure we cover that area. But let's continue now along the loop here. You have some more cocktails. S'mores and hot chocolate there. I guess you can enter the market over here too, or exit. House of Stewart. There's some Holiday socks. Uh, 
toys for kids. And then Mayan art. Look, they even got like a Super Mario one here. <laughs> so now we're gonna have the sun diagonally on our left. We'll try to keep avoiding it as much as possible for the footage. We're making good timing though. It is 3.51 p.m. mountain time and the Browns game versus the Broncos begins around 6.15. So I do want to start getting over there because I like doing a little bit of footage of the stadium and getting there to avoid some of the big last second crowds. So once we do finish our stroll here, I'll head over there, but I'm not gonna film like the whole walk over there. It's reddish. There's like a versions of pizza, some hot soups, sauerkraut soup, pierogi soup. Bank of America Festival Hall. I'm not sure what's in Festival Hall. So it looks like a big dining hall area. <laughs> and it sounds like they're doing a bingo inside there. <laughs> they're encouraging people to come play bingo. I would if I had time, but I'm here on a short window. It does say on the sign, bingo at 3 p.m. Here's some more actual pierogies. You got six for 12. That's not bad for pierogi price. Sausages. More food in the middle areas here. You've got German street food, kebab sandwiches. And so this half, it seems like a lot of the vendors are more food related, which is also very cool. Another bakery, Bavarian pretzel for nine bucks. All right, we got one more section to check out. Some sauerkraut. Wiener schnitzel, kids hot dog, they have a kids menu for the little ones, soup. Delicious crepes are being advertised over here. and hot apple cider. They're out of the pear crepes, but they have Nutella crepes, Bavarian crepes. So this area we went to already. So there's just one more spot. Looks like they do have a couple standing tables if people wanted to enjoy. I think the only remaining place is right here. Smoked salmon potato pancakes, black forest cake. So very nice. exiting now real quick to give a quick glimpse of what that tree looks like and I have showed this in a previous year's video 
but it lights up and does like a musical show with music. They actually have a line where you can go inside and look upward in from underneath the tree. And then the building I was referring to earlier, that's all, you know, I said it has green, red, blue, purple lights. That's what it looks like at the evening. And I also have that in one of my, one or more of my videos as well. So across the street, I'm not sure what's going on over there, but there is a big, oh, when I say big, it's not that big, but there is a line of sorts. I mean, I get the sense like it's almost like a food pantry type thing coming out of that truck. There's also a couple of small nativity scenes over there, I think. Looks like someone's inside one of the nativity scenes right now. Got that one there, and then the little elves over there. Okay, so let's. I'm gonna try to walk down West Colfax Avenue, which is this next road here, and make a left hand turn. It says it's about a 40 minute, 42 minute walk to the football stadium. I'm probably not gonna film that whole walk, especially if I can walk at a faster pace, but if I see something interesting, I'll maybe capture it. Let me at least turn the corner and see how it looks. Unique looking architecture on that building with the windows of various shapes and sizes. Yeah, so there might be a couple of blocks that are a wall, but especially if we're getting closer to the stadium, it might be heavy traffic. So I'll see where I pick up the footage, but I'll try to cut out some of this walking time something you don't want to see as i was walking through this just a little bit earlier uh big like diaper looking thing but more like an adult one with sh crap all over it so it's like oh make sure you don't step in that which is i know there's parts in east colfax which i did a video on that's supposed to have a lot of homeless west colfax i'm not sure of it goes the opposite way We've already covered some ground. We can see how we're sort of on the edge of downtown Denver. The football stadium is sort of in that general vicinity, I believe. Still got a ways to walk though. There's a campus of some kind here. Google Maps is telling me to turn at 9th Street Park, which is the next intersection. So now I turn down 9th Street. Google Maps says 9th Street Historic Park, Greenway with Victorian era sites. Let's see if that's true. It does look like a little 
Victorian park and some of the housing structures. I don't know, I wonder if they're actually some shops or if they're more like historical buildings of some kind. Or better yet, or maybe they're actually <laughs> houses. I mean, I see that guy walking like a package up to the place. I mean, that one says like a health institute, honors program, maybe the campus, whatever uh, college campus has some of their offices in here, because over there it even says for Metropolitan State University of Denver, Office of Online Learning. I guess all of this is part of the university. And there from a distance you can see the home of the Denver Broncos. Based on the amount of cars here, I have to imagine uh, these lots are being used for game day parking. The sun is almost setting, but if I keep the camera forward, again, right in the eye light, you can see it probably reflecting off my glasses. Try to have it at an angle facing the stadium over there. better yet since this is just going to be walking a little bit let me cut out this footage I'll pick it up once I see the next uh, notable thing to mention and highlight All right. so, so now that's that parking lot I was walking near before now it's having me make a right hand turn you can see one of the amusement parks is there in the distance I don't know if that thing's open now it's probably not open for the winter season or colder colder months of the year but we're going to be navigating and still going past this block i think it's going to be walnut street is where i'm going to make a left hand turn once i go to walnut still some more weaving in and out before i actually get to the stadium About one hour to kick off. Uh, Browns fans don't want to be reminded of this. John Elway leading the drive. So now I've returned after the Browns Broncos game to the Union Station area. You can see all the tree lightings. The yeah, outdoor Christmas tree and then Union Station decked out in green and red. I thought they were going to have the animated light show, but not just the green and red. Maybe I was mistaken on the hours or how often that is displayed.
nonetheless, if you enjoyed this holiday stroll through Denver in December 2024, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time.